Hello everyone. Today we will begin the series of how to develop your own programming language. We will be using Rust and the Nom parser library. These are the basic steps everyone takes when creating a programming language. So the first step is to lex the input, which means taking the input file and splitting on the white space. Second, we parse these tokens and then we create an AST. So an AST is short for an abstract syntax tree. And when you have this abstract syntax tree constructed, you can interpret it or you can compile it. And we will be creating an interpreter because this is way easier to do. With the NOM library, we can combine these two steps into one step because NOM will do this for us automatically. And then we will create an interpreter on top of that. So let's get started with the hello world example. So I will create a new project called salt. I will call my project salt lang. Inside here, we need to add the uh, nom library. Nom is a parser combinator library, which makes it possible to combine different parsers, such as the tag parser, which expects some token. Then you can combine this with another parser, which check if it is a number or a string. And then you just put these together to create your final parser. So let's create our first input file. I will call it input.salt. So for the first program, I want to print hello world. Like this. So this is what we will be creating a parser for. So let's go into source main.rs. And uh, the first thing we need to do is to read our input file. I will just use the macro to make it easy. Then we need to create a new parser. So I will create a file called parse.rs. So here we need to define some things. We need to define the structure for our EST like what kind of types we have, and we need to write the parser. So I will define the types first. The first one is going to be an atom. These are the basic types like a number, string, objects, arrays, and we will just start off with string, which contains a string. Then we need to create a parser, which can parse a string. And all of our parsers will return the i results from mom and this is gonna be stir which is the type for the rest of the string and then we're gonna return an atom the input will be in stir as well so this parser will expect the double quote then it will take everything until the next double quote then we will map it to an atom so i will write let's parser and to expect a double quote you use the tag and we need to import both of these. And they come from num this one and this one. Now, notice that for we're parsing a string, we don't care about the actual double quotes. We just want to dismiss them. So there's a parser for this called delimited. It takes three parsers and it only returns the output from the second one. So let's use this. So we will expect a double quote, then we will take until a double quote, and then we will expect a double quote. And we need to import both of these. Then we need to map the result of this to an atom, and we can use the map parser for this. Then the parser, and what you want it to return, if it's successful. So we want to map the parser. We want to map this to a string. So let's import this as well. And this returns another parser. So let's call it on input. Now we have a parser which can parse a string. So let's try this out in main.rs. So we'll go back to main.rs. And you need to add mod parse to make it a module. Then let's use the uh, parse string. 
Let's call the parse string on this string. And let's just debug this and see what we get. Obviously, we need to derive debug. So when we run this, we get a string and we only get what's inside the double quotes. So if this is invalid, we get an error. So that's the basics of how to implement parsers using knob. Let's go back to parse.rs. Now we need another enum, which will be for our expressions, such as if statements, function calls, net statements, etc. And we will just have one for today, which is going to be a function call. So this will expect a string and then the arguments. So this is going to be a vector of atoms. Let's derive debug for this as well. Then let's parse a function call. So the input is going to be a string slice. And your result type is going to be string slice for the rest and the expression. So this print line, hello world, this is the same as a name, then a parenthesis, then an atom, and a closing parenthesis. Let's make this simple with just a single atom for now. So to parse the name, we can use the alpha one parser. This parses multiple letters and import this. Then we want to parse a opening parenthesis and a closing parenthesis and then some atom inside. We will use the delimited. We don't care about the actual brackets. So it starts with a open parenthesis. Then we parse a string. And then a closing parenthesis. Then we can combine these two with the tuple parser, which just combines multiple parsers into one. And let's import this. And then we can map the result of this to an expression. So we got the name and the arc. This is going to be name dot two string and then the arg is gonna be just the arg that we need to call this on the inputs so let's try this one by going back to main.rs parse call and let's write print line So when we run this, we see that the function is print line and the string is hello world. So now we need to create a interpreter. So let's create one called eval.rs. So first let's import all the types from the parse module. And I will add this as a module so that we get some type checking. Then we need to create a eval function, which will take an expression and return an expression. Then we just match on the expression to check which kind of expression it is. So I will just uh, autofill. So if we have a call, we get a name and the arc. If the name is print line, then we just want to print the argument. And then we need to return something. For now, we will just not return anything. But for the future episodes, we need to return an expression. Let's make this public. And then we go back to main.rs. Let's store the result of parsing in a variable. And let's run the evaluator on the expression. So now we will run it on this input. Let's see what we get. 
So it prints hello world. And we see that it's working. Now it prints hello another. To make this more exciting, let's implement display for our atom. And if the atom is a string, let's just write the string. So when we go back to our evaluator, let's use the display instead. So when we run this now, we see that it prints hello another. And when we change this, we get hello salt rust. So that's the basics to getting started with an interpreter. I will be doing a lot more of content in this series. So stay tuned for that. And uh, that's it. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next video. All right. Goodbye.